that dreaded time is finally here. The Rugby World Cup 2023. <laughs> it's over. Fantasy Rugby World Cup is finished. Today I will be bringing you my final Rugby World Cup fantasy video of 2023. It will be a humongous review of each round of the fantasy and of course going through those final leaderboards to see who takes the bragging rights in the Bears Gamer community and that global leaderboard. So I hope you guys are looking forward to this. Let's get into it. Hello rugby fans and welcome back to the channel. Today as mentioned I am here with my final Rugby World Cup fantasy video. We will be reviewing each round, going through my picks and then finally doing a last look at the Bears Gamer Championship standings to see where you all came and how well I did myself. We'll also look at the global leaderboards because a few of you in the Bears Gamer Championship has done very, very well in that as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. I've really enjoyed this World Cup, particularly with the fantasy stuff. It's really helped grow my channel. We've picked up many new subscribers. The videos have been getting good views for the fantasy content. So number one, I would like to thank all of you who have tuned in to my fantasy content over the course of the Rugby World Cup. I've received Lots of nice messages on Instagram, uh, TikTok and other social medias saying how my videos have helped people win their little private leagues with family members and things like that. And there is no better feeling than me knowing that this channel has helped you guys at some point during the last few months and taking some big enjoyment out of the Rugby World Cup. So thank you guys. Thanks for joining in with the channel for the past two months. Of course, the fantasy content still continues with the Premiership Fantasy Rugby. You can join my leagues for that. I will keep the content going on that. And then for International Rugby, we'll be back for the Six Nations. They usually have a fantasy game. So if I don't see some of you guys until then, it's been a, ple been a pleasure. And I've really enjoyed having you along at the Bears Gamer YouTube channel during this Rugby World Cup. So thank you. And let's get into our round number one. Now, this seems like an absolute age away. It really does. I had 556 points. And just by looking at the players I picked, Tupau, Fischetti, Ruzza, Flamon, we got Khaleesi, Michael Leach, Valentini, Carter Gordon, Lamani, James Lowe, Nakamura, Ringrose, Matsushima, and Ange Capuzzo. Uh, it, looking at it now, and going back to that first week, it's not a bad average score, really. I think the disappointing thing for me was the James Lowe as my captain. And I think he was even my triple captain for that week, um, which what didn't return well at all. It was a very, very bad triple captaincy pick, of course. In the game itself, he had a few chances to score tries and other people took those chances. So disappointing there but elsewhere to Powell 41 uh, Michael Leach 51 Ringrose 59 Caputso with 49 not a bad average score 556 five, we got even worse though for round number two some real shocking performances I'm looking at Lewis with five Geelong with six not great we got Vincent with 13 um, some of our better performers were Caleb Clark, 88, Grant Williams, 71. So yeah, some good scores, but also some poor scores. Again, another poor captaincy pick, Jamine only picking up 44 points for me there in an overall score of 437. Moving on to round three. This was a big week with 885 points. Points. The majority of that coming from the captaincy choice of Pinot uh, of France. If you go back to the round three fixture, it was against Namibia. He scored 166 points, which of course was doubled for the captaincy. We also had Dupont with 106. Theo Dan started my run of picking hookers very, very well throughout the tournament, scoring 71 points against Chile. Of course, Martins started becoming a staple of most people's teams. Ramos, 64. Tommaso Allen, 50. Another good shot. 
And we amassed that score as well with Fafita getting minus 12, getting sent off. So yeah, 885 I think ended up being my highest score of the tournament. Round number four, another very good performance. 844. Uh, the main reason there was Darcy Graham. Of course, he was my captain, amassing 390 points. 195 against Romania, including several tries. So that was, again, another good captaincy choice. We also had Ardi Saveo with 92 points. Crevi of Argentina, a very good hooker pick again with 57. Unfortunately, there were um, a couple of awful, awful picks, mainly Bello uh, with six. And then Mapimpi, of course, that's when he picked up his injury and only amassed four points for me. That is when I went fairly hard on Uruguayans as well. Ardao and Fratas not playing particularly well. We move on to round five. Again, another good score, 788. We're starting to find our flow now. Ramos was 71. We had Leicester, 106. I had Charles Piertau as my captain, earning 140. Should have gone with Leicester as my captain, but I didn't. Damian McKenzie, 82 points. Martins with 41. This is where he started reeling off big performances after big performances. Not a single choice in single figures. The worst performing was Gigashvili with 13. Uh, no, sorry, Flamon was with 11. So two poor performances there. But for the last three rounds, we've been almost at 800 points. So I was beginning to get happy with that. Round six, we knocked ourselves down a bit. This is when we reset and got ourselves... Was this the knockout? No, this was the final group stage game. Um, so Marcus Smith was a poor choice for me, only amassing nine points. That was when he got... Um, yeah, he played... For, that was when he was getting smashed around and came off the pitch. Was getting bloodied and battered. He only got nine for me. Taggy as well with his worst performance of two coming off injured I believe but there were some good performances as well. Muvaka as my hooker pick again continuing the tradition of good hooker picks. Jack Morgan was my defensive king there with 54. Louis Rees Samet was my captain with 88. Bundy Aki with the 54 points. He was another great standout performer throughout the tournament. Um, so yeah that was the quarterfinals wasn't it? That round? Yeah of course because it was against Fiji. So then we moved into round number seven, the semi-finals, and I was on 552. Some poor, poor picks this week. I was expecting a lot more from the spring box. Reinach only got two, Vermeulen only six, Delande 14, Cheslin Colby 12. Of course, they were playing England and a lot more was expected of them against them. Of course, they did win in the end. Uh, but only by a point. The All Blacks were firing against Argentina. Ardi Sabea, 62. Mark Talea, my captain, 195. Will Jordan, 106. So they performed well. Farrell with 23 is my uh, fly half. So that was when we got 552 points. And then to finish off the World Cup final and the bronze final. Finished with 419 points. Made the good decision, very good decision to captain Mark Talea. He was the outstanding performer for the All Blacks. He managed to get me 118. Buffelli got me 41. Martin Gonzalez, 41. Ben Earl, who's been strong for England throughout the whole tournament, was 60. And then elsewhere, just a lot of average scores. Atoji was 16. Uh, Jordi Barrett, 18. Diolande with 12. Will Jordan, only 15 points in the final. The Argentinian props did quite well with 20 points or over. So I finished up with 490 points. Is there a way? Uh, yeah, so that was the final team. I amassed 5,136 points. And where did that leave us in the end? So here are all the leagues that I was a part of. Finishing strong with green arrows in all of them. The Bears game of Fantasy World Cup, one shy of 300 entries, 299. I said in my previous video that I was hoping to crack the top 100. Didn't quite do it, but yeah, finished strong. Finishing 66th in the Uggy community, another fantastic YouTuber who you should check out. No, I finished 11th in Cornflakes World Cup Bonanza, another fantastic rugby gaming rugby YouTube channel. 
160 out of 3957. So I think, although I finished 102nd in mine, which might not look as good considering there's 300 entries, but that is for people who are out there seeking fantasy content. That is the elite of the fantasy rugby community. If you look in the Dream Team Rugby, which had 3,957, I finished 160th. Very happy with that. And then the Fantasy Rugby Geek, another fantastic fantasy account that you can find on Twitter. 2,133 entries. I finished 414, so happy with that. And then in the English League, which has got, uh, what, 95,000? I finished 3,544. So again, fairly happy with that. But let's get on to the Bears Gamer Fantasy World Cup final table. The winner, back row drivers with 6,071 points. Not massive amounts between the top five or so. You had Brody, who was leading for many, many weeks in second. Yippie Trye third. Eddie Jones is my dad fourth. Shane Speedy 88 fifth, Sambo 2317 sixth, No Beard No Good seventh, Mayo Muncher eighth, Frazinski ninth, and Just Jordan rounding out the top ten. I'm all the way down, as I mentioned, in a hundred and second, and I am a good 900 or so points behind some of these. Let's look at back row drivers final team. So we went with Malhern 34, Theo Dan 49, Gajo 25, Atoji, Petty, Issa, Surveyor, Ben Earl, Faf de Klerk, Richie Mwanga, Mark Talea as captain, Rico Yuani, Jordi Berra, Henry Arundel, who had a terrible final round. Will Jordan as well with 15. Uh, so yeah, he got 456. I got 490, which is actually looking at the scores here. A higher final score than everybody in the top 20. So really good finish. But congratulations to Back Row Driver, who is the winner of the Bears Gamer Fantasy World Cup. Really well done to him. Shout out to Fraudy as well, who's been up in and amongst it all the way through. And you'll see back row drivers who not only won the Bears Gamer Fantasy World Cup, he actually won the overall leaderboard by just three points, finishing 6,071. Second place was 6,068. And if you scroll through this high list in the leaderboard, you'll also notice Fraudy there finishing ninth, Yippie Trye finishing 12th, Eddie Jones is my dad finishing 16th, so players who are all a part of the Bears Gamer Fantasy World Cup, all doing incredibly well in the overall leaderboard. So that's it, guys. We've had a recap of the tournament. Congratulations again to Back Row Drivers for winning the competition. And that is it for the Rugby World Cup Fantasy content. Of course, we've got to wait another four years now to the next Rugby World Cup Fantasy game. But hopefully you've enjoyed my content throughout. And perhaps you'd like to join the Premiership Fantasy Rugby that I've got going currently on the channel. And then, of course, once the Six Nations comes around next year, perhaps you'll venture back to the channel to get signed up for that. And we'll go again and see how many entries we can get and just have some extra fun whilst watching the rugby each week. Please do drop a like if you've enjoyed today's video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you finished the Rugby World Cup Fantasy game. Were you happy? Were you, did you make some iffy choices along the way? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please do more that subscribe button. I've been the Bears Gamer. Thank you all once again for joining in during this World Cup with the fantasy content. And I'll see you in the virtual scrum.